Hello, Exo Academy. We are going to go over the cloud AI functions in ExoCAD today uh, with the new version of uh, 3.2 Dental DB and Dental CAD. Uh, we have um, AI crown design that's enabled. Uh, so you can see here on the right side, we ha now have this option AI crown design. So uh, first I'm going to show you um, how you can enable that icon uh, so that you can use the AI crown design and then I'm going to show you uh, how it works. So the first thing that you need to do is open uh, your dental DB and in the upper right you're going to click the settings gear icon and go into settings. Uh, in the main settings menu on the left hand side you'll see this cloud option. You're going to click that cloud option and the CAD cloud features option is unchecked by default so you'll have to uh, check that to enable it and then click save and restart your dental DB so that's how you get the icon uh, enabled for you to even uh, be able to go down that workflow for AI crown design uh, so the next part uh, I'm going to show you is what the AI crown design workflow actually looks like. So the, the, for our first example, we're going to do a crown on number 30. So just like a normal crown workflow, we're going to select the tooth. The material and our options and parameters and I'm going to set up the define the neighboring teeth and I'm gonna set a shade for the job and now instead of going forward with design I'm going to do AI crown design I'm using, uh, for your information, I'm using build number 9037. This is the latest build as of, as of today's date. Uh, so just like in the regular crown workflow, it asks you to load the jaw scan. So we're going to load the scan files. orient our scan and then after orientation the next step is cloud AI crown design so uh, ExoCAD is asking request crown generation for tooth number 30 and you can use the ExoCAD version of uh, biogeneric generation which is uh, auto detect style or you can choose one of your tooth libraries um, such as E, Exofan, HD um, or one of the ZRS libraries. Um, I just have it default to auto detect. If you go into the parameters window you can instruct ExoCAD to make the occlusion um, uh, a certain distance. Same thing with the contacts, the proximal contacts. So for mine, I have mine set distance to antagonist as 0 0.24 millimeters and the distance to the neighbor, the proximal contacts, um, a negative 0 0.02 millimeters. The next option is uh, adjacent contacts activate to get broader more uh, adjacent contacts instead of pointy contacts so you can get more area um, I have mine set at a uh, hundred percent I like broad contacts and smooth versus detailed so a lower value of that 
uh, is going to be a, a smoother crown. A higher value is going to be more detail, more grooves and uh, ridges, uh, deeper grooves, I should say. Uh, mine is at 70%. And then there's a box auto detect uh, maximum intersection. Automatically detect the maximum intersection by analyzing the adjacent teeth and the antagonist. So this is going to um, basically detect the occlusion with the neighboring teeth. So as those scans intersect, um, as all scanners will show an intersection of teeth that doesn't happen in real life, you can opt for ExoCAD to determine what that value is uh, in order to determine the uh, occlusion. I just haven't, I haven't used this feature yet, so I just stick with my milling parameters that work well with my mill. So those are specific to me, uh, but you can, you can change those obviously for your situation. So once I've set those, um, once I've set those before, I'll do another video to show how you can preset or you can set those parameters using the work parameters configuration tool. Um, but you should never have to, once you have those settings set for your specific mill or your milling center that you send to, you don't ever have to change those. So when you get to this cloud AI crown design portion, all you really need to do is click uh, request, request cloud calculation. You're going to um, confirm the acknowledgement and uh, it gives you a timer. So this countdown uh, timer is sending this information to the ExoCAD servers. Then it's going to perform that calculation for what the AI crown design uh, would look like and then it'll send it back to us. Uh, this calculation, uh, this estimate is showing it's about one minute and 30 seconds uh, away. It's gonna take about that long to return the design. So we just sit around and wait for that. You can go numb a patient, go do an exam or something, um, or you could have your assistants do this. So just all, you, all we've done to this point is import the scans, bring in the scans, and make sure that the scan orientation is uh, correct, that it isn't inside out. Uh, and then just design, ask ExoCAD to design the crown. Now that the crown is uh, returned, ExoCAD is asking if we like this design. So I hide the antagonist. This is the crown design that Cloud uh, AI crown came up with. I right, take a look. Uh, it looks pretty good to me. So I click, I'm happy with the result, and I'm going to continue. Now it's just our normal crown workflow. Um, I can detect the margin, or I can draw, f draw free, which is what I normally do. But if you have a, um, a die, like at a lab, you scanned a die, 
um, your margin detection should just be a couple clicks. Okay, margin looks good to me. I like to determine the insertion direction just because I want to eliminate undercuts uh, on the proximal surfaces. So I normally change the insertion direction, but you don't have to. I've got all of my crown bottom parameters already preset. I've already determined the appropriate shape for the tooth. So really, I like to bulk up my proximal contacts because I want to make sure that I have a good, strong, solid, broad contact. And then I adapt, which it could have been, I could, I could have skipped all of this, but this is my, this is kind of my final design steps. And because my milling unit isn't going to mill in all of that anatomy. I just do a quick smooth over the occlusal surface to mill it more efficiently. I look at my emergence profile, margin profile, and that's it. So the AI crown design really saves a lot of time. I don't have to do any adjusting or morphing of the anatomy. It looks pretty good. so. Uh, then that, then I'm done. I can show you another AI crown design. See how quickly this goes and how little intervention, you know, human inter intervention is needed when designing these. And it's going to make, I think, your workflow a lot smoother. Um, a lot more efficient and much easier to delegate to team members uh, that don't have they won't have design responsibility. So this, this uh, crown design, you can see it takes about um, 20 seconds to upload. And then once it's uploaded, um, it's less than two minutes to design the crown. And again, you could be doing something else.
Okay, so the crown is back, and now I again I'm just going to marginate. Set my insertion direction. That's pretty good. Good morning, John. Good morning. Uh, my crown bottoms and my mar margins are all preset. I don't have to do any free forming, um, but I will check the contact areas. Again, I like to make them even broader. Uh, but then I will just uh, adapt to what my parameters are and then I'm done so a little over three minutes maybe maybe five minutes so I uh, hope that helps uh, and I hope you enjoy the new AI crown design feature um, now I'm gonna go I can I'm going to show you how to set those AI crown parameters using the work parameters configuration tool.